Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Nafisa Bouzay, you know, with my co-host, Coach Gaines. Coach Gaines, um, alhamdulillah, we're just giving you brothers a little taste of some of the knowledge is wealth series that will be coming soon, starting this Thursday, Yom Khamis, where it will be about, I think, from one, to, about one o'clock, yeah. roughly about one o'clock, one o'clock every Thursday. Every Thursday. And, uh, inshallah, we'll be talking about, you know, finance, different things. Uh, we got some interviews coming along as well. Um, today we're going to do a little special treat for you. Um, I'll, let my brother, I'll let our brother coach take you into what we're going to go into, inshallah. So we're going to do a book review. Search and Rescue has a nice variety of books. Some books are new books, new printed books by artists and uh, by authors. Um, other books we have found books that we, we Search and Rescue um, that we offer as our, our mix. Um, this book in particular is written by a dear friend of mine named Pell called The Transition. The Transition, right? By Pell NYC. Follow Pell NYC on Instagram. And just to tell you a little bit about Pell, uh, he's, a, he's an American, you know, he's a Native American uh, from New York, from New York City. Um, he, used to, he used to be a designer for RP55, which they produce brands such as Indigo Red, Azuri, Aku. Uh, Hustle Gang, these, these brands that you see coming from that, the, these brands come from that particular uh, manufacturing company, RP55. Um, so now Pell has made the transition from being an employee, working as a, as a artist, designer, graphic designer for a company, and now uh, branding himself and coming into his own as an artist entrepreneur. And so this is one of the works that he's produced, um, and I'm, you know, we're very happy to be able to do a book review on this particular work, and um, as we, you know, as you'll see, that this book goes right in right in line with the Knowledge Is Wealth series, because in order for him to make the transition, he needed to have knowledge, and uh, this is what we're gonna, you know, introduce today. So, Brother Nafis is gonna do the that, review. One thing you're gonna see is that this story that's told is gonna be pretty much a lot of you stories that could be relatable to all of us, and um, sometimes. We have to get out, you know, we have to understand that we can be in our own way, all right? What is real currency? We're going to talk about that. So as he read, we're going to extract some beautiful principles that will help you along the way. And you can actually chime in and actually see in real time, you know, how it relates to your life. Go ahead, you can, you can start off. Okay, so he, he signed the book to Coach. Thanks for keeping everything in flight. So this is the... Autograph. Signature autograph from the artist, yeah. You know, flight school coach, you know. So, we're going on to the first page. Let's go to the right here. Since, since basically what you're looking at is someone who was a designer himself and you know, did art, um, graphic art and so forth. So the art plays a major role in telling the story. As they say, a picture worth a thousand words. So if you can uh, read the beginning. I woke up frozen and didn't want to get up again. Yeah, this has happened before, you know. That feeling that you have when you just don't want to get up out of bed. I just wanted to stay wrapped up in warmth of my covers. I did not want to go to work. And this is something that all of us can relate to. Mostly you see on the gram every time you know his name come. Every time Monday hits, you see most people when they come on the gram, they always put up how they hate Monday or they dread going back to work or you know how you feel. So this is that picture that we get every time we gotta go back to work. People feel like slaves, like I gotta get ready to turn in my time, my labor, and so forth. Um, so at the end of the day, this is that picture he's, he's painting. Here's a guy laying in bed, he dreading the outcome of getting ready to go to work. Do you understand? And this is sort of like how many people are. They drag, they drag their feet, and they want to go to work. And I'm going to tell you the reason why. You want to see as in the book, he's going to explain. But the reason why we get that feeling every time when Monday come in or every time we land in the bed and we don't want to go to work, you want to see why. Because you have to understand when it comes to currency, you got to know what's the real currency. You got to know what's the real profit. What's the real money? A lot of us don't really know that. So we don't do what... We normally do, we do what we're programmed to do. So the next page. So that being said, uh, the artist illustrating the dread of getting out of bed. <laughs> yeah, fine, go ahead. 
I didn't have some big thing happening. There wasn't an appointment or a meeting I was worried about. I didn't have a presentation or a big task, challenge or report due. I wasn't sick or in pain. I just didn't want to face my day. So he's telling you right now, pretty much ain't nothing really required me to get up right now. And the fact that, you know, I don't even want to face my day. So I don't need too much elaboration on that. We're going to extract some beautiful principles that can be distracted from this book. Go ahead. So the next page, he's getting up, looking at his computer, looking at the, the, daily, the daily reportings, you know, the financial reportings, the forecasting, the numbers. <laughs> he's looking at the Go numbers. Go ahead. So today was going to be like all other days. It was going to be the same routine that I have been doing since being taught, since being hired. I remember when I first started and this routine was fulfilling. My day was filled with unknowns. I was learning the ins and outs of the business and my cubicle was my home base. Now I want you to understand something. This is where we're gonna get principle one. Now see, he mentioned a key word here, that he was hired, all right? Number one, you always have to remember, this is a fundamental principle, okay? And that is that if you don't, you understand, the, the principle is, is that if you don't work for yourself, you don't believe in yourself, you understand? You're always going to be working for someone else. You understand? You're always going to be pushing someone else's dream if you're not pushing your own. And that's when we don't, we don't get the, the, the catch. You might say, well, what you talking about, brother? We got to work. We got to feed our family. True. But what do you work for? And that's what you want to see. And that reminds me of a time we had. We had took a trip to New York, and uh, yeah. novice, novice drove me to go uh, to go pick up some uh, inventory from one of these warehouses. It wasn't New York; it was like North Jersey, where a lot right. of the warehousing is, is are in like North Jersey area. So on our way back, novice is giving the same type of speech. You know, knowledge is wealth. You know, this, that, and the third. I just got so frustrated. And I said, man, I got a trunk full of somebody else's dream, dream right, right now. now. Yeah. He said, man, he fell out, and it was like it was it was like a priceless moment. But it was it was all vibing off of this particular. This right principle. here, exactly, because we work because we think that we are afraid of what we're going to see in the book as it's going to come out. We are afraid to believe in ourselves, and when you don't believe in yourself. I mean, no one else, you know what I'm saying? You're going to believe in others. Others won't believe in you as strong as you will believe in yourself. Go ahead. So the next page. So now he's giving you the illustration, early day, you know, you want things out the way. Okay, he's giving you the idea of the illustration. So he's finally out of the bed now. He's out of bed, hit the button. The alarm clock. I was mining for, I was mining for information and delivering data from one department to the next. I was problem solving in between cups of coffee and kale salads. This was what I had dreamt of. So in other words, he's giving you a little pun here, being sarcastic. In other words, he's telling you, look, I'm living the corporate life. This is what I thought that I wanted. You know, I'm in the office. This is what my, my life consists of. I'm drinking my kale like I'm supposed to. I'm remaining healthy. You know what I'm saying? I'm in between problem solving, between cups of coffees. You know, this is what American Dream tells us. This mining, is I'm, I'm, mining, I'm mining from information. And this type of concept, <laughs> this type of concept is what they call a safety net. And this is what school program us to be. We're, we're being programmed. They're telling us to have a safety net. Go to work. If you get retired, you can get a 401k. You, you know, you can get your pension. You can get etc. You play it safe. You don't be a risk taker. And that's the big mistake you can ever make out of your life because you're going to kill something. You're going to kill your number one fan. You're going to kill your number one currency. And that's what he's going to teach us in this book. You don't want to be able to do that. If you're working, working should always should work for you. That's how you should think. Whenever you get a job, it's never you're working for them. It's the job working for you. You will learn about that in the Knowledge as Well series. Go ahead. I'm not exactly sure where he's going with this picture, but he's, he's clearly out. You know, <laughs> he's trying to make some magic happen. You know? Right. So we'll see. We'll see where the, narr where the narrative goes. All right. So pretty much here. Go ahead. So well, sort of. I hadn't dreamt of being in a cubicle when I was a kid. I had dreams of being a superhero a comic book artist, and a magician. My mother told me I could be anything that I wanted to I be. I want him to stop right here. This is real crucial. This is him, and this is you. Each one of us have an inner genius inside of us. Each one of us has something that we wanted to be that wasn't projected by what others thought we should be. Each one of us had the potential to become great, but we killed this potential. This is where he wanted to be at. This is what he had dreamed of, not no cubicle. As you should see, watch what he say. Go ahead. This, this, just a, this was his dream. This was his dream. To be a magician. So what? How can he do magic? Pay attention. <laughs> Seems funny, right? So, okay. 
So as I got older, my inner circle of friends, family, and teachers told me the same thing my mother told me. You could be anything you want to be. But now what I wanted to be would have to come from a list, a list of prerequisites, none of which helped me get closer to becoming a magical illustrating superhero. Right? You gotta hurry up, can't be too long. So, okay, where he where he thought he should be versus where he was at. And that's and, and that's it. And that's that's the point we want to bring is that your real currency is your creativity. Your real currency is your creativity. So to assure that I became a successful member of society, I had to study hard and keep my nose in the books. Upon reciting my childhood dreams to my peers, I was laughed at and encouraged to give a real answer. Because that's not real to currency to know. That's not real currency to know. <laughs> you want what? You want to be some magical illustrator. That's not where money going to be at. Pick a pick a profession, pick a career that makes sense. That don't make no sense. Go be a physical therapist or something. Go be a doctor, Go be a lawyer, you know what I'm saying? But don't follow your dreams. That's the catch. Don't follow your dreams. So this is the next page. Yeah. So you can see the illustrations. I want you guys to really, the illustrations are really telling the story. Yeah, they're telling the story, but I wanted, I wanted, I wanted to deduct, before we go on, I wanted to deduct the principles that need to be grabbed, right? So before you move on to the next one, your dream is where your currency lies at. Your creativity, each one of you had it. You remember what you wanted to do. You remember what you had, those dreams. Don't go to work, punch in every day. You got a family, you got this, this, and that, and you ain't trying to invest in yourself. You ain't trying to invest in your own dreams. You're just killing yourself. You are building someone else's dream for them. You are building someone else's work for them. And you're trying to play it safe. And that, and that, and there's nothing wrong with building somebody else's dream with them. Abu Isa, Abu Isa had made a good point that uh, I can see my dream within your dream. I can, I see where I fit in. I, I believe in your dream, so I wanna help build that. So when we're talking about building community, believing in each other's dreams, or, or, or working to, 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 to barter each other's help and service, okay, I don't really believe all the way in your dream, but you're not gonna hurt anybody with your dream, so can I give to yours and you give to mine, and can we create this system, this community amongst ourselves so we can all get ahead? So um, yeah, that, that, that works well. with that works with group economics. That's not the same thing I'm saying here. Okay. When you're working for somebody and building someone's dream solely and you're not profiting by yourself, then that's killing your creativity. When you're doing what we call a fear barter exchange, mm -hmm. where I know that you have a goal and I have a goal and I can help you achieve your goal, and that becomes inclusive. And that's a dream that can become group economics. We're talking about when someone clock in for someone and you know they got nothing to do with your dream. They're just doing it for the money. They're doing it for the money and yeah. they're trying to play That's it the safe. Problem. That's the point we're talking about. So this predetermined path seemed easier. This predetermined path seemed easier. Right. I, knew, I knew what to do and everyone told me it was the right path towards success. So I forgot about my childish dreams of being a magical illustrating hero that used this pen as a magical wand I buried my dreams underneath textbooks, homework assignments, and, un and unopened emails. I buried them deep where no one could find them, not even me. Now this is the point, he killed his creativity, is basically what he's telling you. I went with what the society said was best for me to do, which is the most safest place to be, the safest route. Very so I didn't want to invest, I didn't want to do anything. They teach us a long time ago, they tell us what, the rich don't work for money. You might say, well what are you working for? We ain't working for money, what are we working for? So at the end of the day, you have to realize your money have to work for you. But how do you get to that stage? We need to stop punching in every day, not stop working. We can work for anyone we want to work for, but we need to make that which we're working for become our currency. How do we do that? We start investing in ourselves. We start investing in our dreams, investing in others' dreams that will be inclusive of our own dreams that will actually bring us where we need to be. So the next one, again, kind of the groundhog, the groundhog day effect. Right. Each day it became harder to get out of bed. Why? Because he wasn't himself. That creativity was lost. Go ahead. In front of the TV with the remote. In front of the TV with the remote. With the remote. I don't remember what day, week, or even month it was when I felt different. But I do remember the feeling I got every time I heard about someone who was unwilling to compromise their dreams. Why? Because he gave up his dreams when he heard his friends laughing at him. He gave up his dreams when he buried it under the list of what the prerequisite and the predetermined, predetermined path was to make things easier for him. So in regards, he couldn't feel alive. He didn't feel, he didn't feel awake. And tell me you don't feel like that every time you see somebody that you knew 
and you see them chasing their dreams, you look at them with admiration, whether you want to believe it or not, because you feel as though they're brave. They're taking a risk which you did not take when you could have taken that risk. And that's why they say the entrepreneur is a maverick. You yeah. know, he, he's the risk taker. He's the, he's the one on the front line. We have to have a little more reverence for these guys and, and not look at them like they're, they're you know, if they, don't make, they don't, if they don't make the financial cut, that they're just, you know, they're just useless in society. No, it's a lot of knowledge that you learn from losing, a lot of knowledge that you learn from trying, and there's integrity there. So, um, you know, a person is gonna is gonna become a better person the more he fails and comes back because it humbles him. Well, know? actually, trial and error is the real knowledge, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. Whenever you experience the old yeah, saying, exactly. experience is the best teacher. So, embrace these guys when you see them in the street. All right, we get ready to end it now. The lawyer turned the learn the lawyer turned banker or physician turned baker. photographer. I'm sorry, F1. What? The lawyer turned baker or the phys the physician turned photographer made me feel alive. And that's what happened to me with social media. Like when Instagram first came out, a lot of people was like, oh yeah, if Instagram is it's a facade, it's a bunch of people, you know, being who they think they are, and this is not really real. But I got something different. I got an outlet for people to, to, to introduce who they were inside, you know, and, 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 and now you got people that are becoming photographers. I'm like, yo, this, this, this is the guy that was the secretary over at the front Oh, he's a photographer? Oh, he, he can do this? Okay, wow. I can know, I can, I know what this person does. I got introduced to so many businesses, so many, so many creatives, so many, so much knowledge that I didn't have before. So I felt alive as well when I was able to finally meet other people who identified like I did with taking those, those risks trying to be, you know, some, trying to live their dreams. Even me and Nafis' relationship, when I met him, he was living his dream. He calls me because he felt like I can help him, vice versa. We, co we collaborated on that. So um, I, really, I really connected with this particular point that he made that, you know, um, seeing other people, you know, actually doing it was, was, was a motivation for me to do it as well. You know what I mean? And not even just that, I'm gonna give you something, another secret that you don't know. The Creator gave us all the treasure that we were born with. And if we don't utilize that treasure and we keep it locked up, we're never going to tap into it. Your creativity, your, in, in, um, your ingenuity, your genius is inside yourself. Your natural resources is yourself. If you don't cre tap into that, you're tapping it every time you utilize it for someone else. But you need to tap in and utilize it for yourself. That's what a capitalist does different from a socialist. A capitalist is someone who's going to what? Become more self-interest, going to make it work for himself, as opposed to a socialist who's going to include everyone else, but he's going to find, wind up excluding himself and harming himself. Go ahead. They picked from the list and still decided to follow their dreams. Their need for creativity survived all the books, homework, and unopened emails. <laughs> yeah, I got they, were, of those. No, they were living. They were in, living in wonderlust. They were living in wonderlust. They were living that. the dream. He envied that. I was, and, I, and meanwhile, I was frozen. No, he was frozen. Go ahead. And it's the, you know, it's kind of showing you the contrast between what he saw and what made him feel alive and then his actual state with his mundane routine. What you gonna go and get ready to say that? Yeah. I did not want to get out of bed and have water cooler conversations about the printer on the third floor breaking down again. I didn't want to talk about deadlines and kale salad. I did not want to walk the same mundane uh, ritualistic steps I had walked for so many years. Out of bed, He's fed up. to the bathroom, brush your teeth. <laughs> Don't forget to brush your teeth. Before I knew it, I was, I was at the door, but today something was different. So, so now he's more energetic. Beautiful illustration. He's, he's way really more energetic. He's really way more job. alive now. Before, he, I mean, his spirit was actually killed, so he's way more alive. I was frozen, not because I had to go to work, but because I did not. I had been two weeks since I handed in my re resignation, which was, which was decorated with my magical illustrating hit superhero pen. I, I quit. <laughs> right. um, with my magical illustrating superhero pen. In bold colors, it read, I quit. This is my two week notice. Today was the first day of the rest of my life. I was scared. I had been scared of being great. See, see that right there? You can see the bold thing, and you see I quit right. 
I quickly illustrated it right there. So he became a law because he started believing in himself. That's the point. In the past, I was scared of all of these ideas, these dreams and aspirations, but today I wasn't. Today I was heading out, of, out to see my first client. I want to stop right there. <laughs> Every corporation you see right now started from where? It was someone's idea. Handshake. Right? Real quick before you go on. Every, everyone, what? It was started from an idea. Everyone's corporation, everyone's job, everyone's place that we work at, it's all was an idea first. Coca-Cola was an idea. Pepsi was an idea. All it was an idea. Understand this. So they found someone to invest in their idea to make it become a reality. McDonald's was an idea. What are you investing in? I'm investing more so in real estate than I'm investing in selling hamburgers. His friends laugh. And they say, we know what you do. We know you sell hamburgers. But no, he said, I sell real estate. And he didn't realize how he was selling real estate. McDonald's is one of the largest companies right now. It's on all of the min major interchanging roads, intersection roads right now. They got all of the most groundbreaking things because he was selling franchise. And he understood that. But see, they thought he was just flipping burgers. It was more bigger than burgers. If you don't have an idea, and you know you have an idea, then you don't know how to execute that idea and actually believe in it, then you actually killed yourself. You killed the currency that you were sent down here with already. Real currency is your creativity. It felt like the first day of a big adventure. I walked out armed with pads, pens, and a couple of magic spells to, to, to be the superhero for the day. Why? Stop there. Why? Because he got his first client. He got his first client. And I understand this, I understand this feeling more. I was telling the brother earlier, I said I had took a board, placed the board into my house. Once I got the board nailed in, I did all of my research, I got the board nailed in, I started my courses. When I got my first, first client for my course, it was something I did, it was something I believed in, it was something I knew I could push out, I was working from my home. It's not so hard like we make it. The only issue we're gonna learn once you come into the knowledge is uh, wealth series, we're gonna talk about that. You have to learn about cash flow, passes versus active income, balance, budget, and all that, you have to learn that. That's where the real secret lies in that, and you get in the head. But this here, becoming a worker and being programmed, we gotta get past that. And this is the end of it here. And he's showing you the transition. And he's New showing office. you the transition. Beautiful New office. office. Beautiful New book. cubicle. Because this is the story of most of us. And he's, and he's, wearing, he's, wearing, he's wearing his art. He's wearing his art, he's living in his art. And, 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 this is, and he's living his dream, right? So, so at the end of the day, so I want to tell you this. You're stuck between two things, the fear factor and the greed factor, right? So when you find yourself coming out, ask yourself honestly, why do I work? Why do I work? See, it's never, all right, we can't do this. It should, why shouldn't I do it? Why should you work? Most of you, you find yourself, why are you working? Oh, I need to pay my bills. I need to do this because it's a fear factor. If you don't work, if you don't do this, you're gonna lose your job, you're gonna, I mean, you're gonna lose your house, you're gonna lose your shelter, you're gonna lose this, your transportation, you're gonna lose this. So it's fear that moves you. And that fear kills your creativity because now you're going to accept a salary that you know don't make your ends meet. You're gonna work twice as hard that you know you should be getting paid way more. You're not gonna push yourself even harder because of that, that fear. And then the greed thing kicks in when you have what? When you get that new raise, when you get that better job with the better salary, and what happens? You that get paid benefit. more, you take the money, and you go what? You don't invest. You go buy more stuff to bring on more problems and more bills. That's what you do. So we have to understand how to do it. And the Quran actually teaches this, to be honest with you. And I quoted the verse before, and I'm going to quote the verse again. Allah talks about the Ibad al-Rahman, the servants of the Most Merciful. Allah says, what he said about them? He says, Alladina lam yakuturu wa lam yakut. He says, Allah said, they are those who do not what? They are not those who are extravagant. They don't waste, right? Nor they are those who are what? They are miserly. They have a middle course. This is a balance sheet, if you don't know. Quran is giving you a balance sheet. They minimize what goes out and they minimize what goes in. The game is to make sure whatever goes out is lesser than what? Is, 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 is lesser than what goes in. The game is what goes in should be greater than what goes out, but we don't understand that type of concept, so we work and we keep putting out the more we get coming in and it exceed what we actually have. So stay tuned, inshallah, this Thursday.
What, what time? One o'clock. One o'clock, we're going to start the first um, series, or the first episode of Dylan Knowledge, Knowledge as well series. Here at the Search and Rescue Dry Goods General Store. Yeah, we're going to do, we're going to do with that. Thank this her, is taped in front of a live studio audience. If you yeah. guys want to come up, be a part of it while we're actually doing it. You can do it. You can do that, and too. If you got any questions or if you want to chime in anything, you can also chime and in. And if we can't answer sessions. your question, ask us, any, ask us anything concerning business in this particular session. Yeah, you know, and um, we can talk. And we can talk about it. And if there's something that we don't know, we'll do the research. We'll bring in the special, the, uh, the specialist. Um, I'm sure that we have a lot of questions. How do we get from point A to point B? And that's that was my thing. Everybody kept telling me, "Yo, be successful, be rich, be this, be that, be on boss." But nobody really gave you the step, the step by steps. And um, maybe it's not designed for everyone to do that. But if you have a question, if you've been wondering about something and you were too shy to ask, you didn't have anybody maybe in your network that can really break it down for you. If you like the way that we talk, the way that we explain things, it might be something you already learned, but they just didn't explain it to you in a way that you can really grasp it. Try us, try you know, try us. Give us a, give us a, you know, give us a holler. Ask us, put it in the inbox and in in in, you know, in the messaging, yeah. and then we'll, 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 if we don't know ourselves, we'll go out and we'll bring in, you know, the the, the proper uh, knowledge and the resources. And remember that the lesson of the day is that what your real currency is your creativity. So go back inside yourself. Be creative, my friends. Be creative. Okay. Be brave. Yes. Yes. One hundred percent. Better go off. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.